everybody. Our special guest today was where the hell did he go? It was my headphones aren't working. I'm, I, I'll fix it. <laughs> Tom Bergeron, you got to catch it. Thanks for being here. There Thanks for being here. Down here. Thank you, Tom. You're not going <laughs> to reverse me now, Mr. <laughs> Host. <laughs> Took my Hollywood Squares gig. <laughs> you know, Mark Summers also. No, he, he was actually too? he actually uh, did the pilot. Got it. I think he did. The, I don't. I don't think that, there was no pilot that I remember. But uh, Mark told me that he had actually been. Uh, I don't know if he was officially hired, but he, like you, was right up there in line for it. Wow. But Whoopi and I had met when she was a guest on a show that I did, which was a spinoff of a cable show I did. Oh. And it was, was on that Fox. Wake Up America or something like uh, that? No, or, uh, or, Wake Up America. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds like, <laughs> welcome, Kansas. Go wake, wake up, up. America. <laughs> 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 it was, uh, the, the cable version was uh, Breakfast Time on FX. That's what it was. And then we did a season. I did. A, I was a guest on that yeah, show. Yeah. It, yeah. It Remember? Like that it was in a studio. It was a uh, whole apartment in the Flatiron District in New York. Yeah. yeah. So Whoopi and I had met on the, the Fox version of that and hit it off. Yeah. And uh, I had been filling in on Good Morning America. Oh, okay. They decided to go in a different direction. You yeah. know, that show business. Sure. And so King World called and said, would you come out and audition for the host job? Interesting. And I thought, well, they're going to fly me out first class. I, I'll see Whoopi. It'll yeah. be fun. I didn't think anything of it. And uh, the two of us hit it off again, just like we had just seen each other. Yeah. And so I flew back to New York and Connecticut. My agent at the time said, you got the job, but you have to move to California. I said, no, never mind. You said no, said no. at first. I said no. I wish you would have stuck with that <laughs> vow. <laughs> you compromised your own integrity. And the very next day they called back and said, yeah, you don't really have to. Because those shows, you know how that, you were a guest on it. You, we shot yeah. five in a day. Yeah. And we would shoot on the weekend. So mm -hmm. Saturday, Sunday, we had 10 shows in the bank. I'd fly back on Monday to uh, New York and Connecticut. So, yeah, so they caved after a day. Did it mean something to you, a little extra from watching it when you were a kid? I oh, mean, that yeah. show was it for Becoming me. friends with Peter Marshall years later Wow, was such a kick for me. When he was on, in the years that Henry Winkler and Michael Levitt, the two final seasons of the show, they exec produced it. And they had a great love for nostalgia. Early 80s? Uh, it was when, The last two years were 2003 uh, and four. No, oh, I, I don't mean your version. Yeah. You were well, no, uh, Before, Peter's version started in the 60s. Well, I know that, yeah. yeah. And but lasted until it. John Davidson was he there did, for a while. Yeah, he did uh, three or four years as well. Yeah. But uh, when Peter was on, he was the center square. And I said to Henry Winkler, I said, do you mind? There's got to be a swap. you got to get Peter back here hosting. I'll oh, take the center square. Oh, that's so cool. So for one episode, we did that. And Peter this Marshall took the... So Black this is after in. Whoopi was there? Then yeah. They had another Whoopi and I were there, at worked together for the first four years. Yeah. And then um, the the fifth year, the center square was alternated between Ellen DeGeneres and Alec Baldwin. No. And then the last year, it was a rotating thing. Brad Garrett did a lot, Martin Mull. And at uh, that time, though, it was produced, but now it's produced by Winkler. By Winkler and Levitt, so, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I did, I, those yeah. years, I did not do the show. I was yeah. there for Whoopi, who's, yeah. by the way... For me personally, there's no one that's ever helped me in my career as much as Wolfie Isn't she has. an absolute doll? Uh, to people who don't understand, I mean, even I, I'm not kidding you, Tom, and I'm sure you'll agree with this. The world has gone so nuts mm -hmm. that if I say, if I have a photo with Whoopi, you're, I'm not a fan of yours anymore. <laughs> to me, <laughs> to, they'll literally say, really? but yeah. you know what? It happens on the other side too. Yeah. You know, if you're yeah. a fan of Trump, then, you know, yeah. I just don't, I think that we need to stop doing all of that. Yeah. You know, you can't do, build guilt by association or whatever. Because a person isn't just what they put out there. Right. Now, you and I have a situation with her where all the, our only experience is Angel. Absolute Absolutely. Angel, I smart, can still call fun. her for yeah. advice or just to chew the fat or, or whatever. go hang at her house. Yeah. You know, she, yeah. I, I stayed at her house last year yeah. in Jersey. And the sweetest person. And no one has ever in Hollywood, you'll probably find this to be true. There's nobody that will really, it's a transactional town. You're not, by the way. You're a good friend. I mean, we've been friends. We haven't seen each other in a while, right. but you'll always be like a good friend. Right. It's not right. transactional. Yeah. The Hollywood has a lot of transactions. For example, I'm looking at you, right? But <laughs> yeah. if you're at a Hollywood party, I'd be looking over your sh Those people are looking over be. shoulder. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah, be. Exactly. But, you know, you know that exactly. feeling when somebody's We're, checking out who else came in the room who might be better for my career. What can they do for me? Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Whoopi's just, she's yeah. just a dedicated friend. Once she liked what I do as, yeah. a, as a talent, yeah. she got me on... Um, 
uh, uh, comic relief. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'll quit the show unless you put him on. Who does that? <laughs> I know. Who I know. does that? Yeah, yeah. And then once... Oh, oh what? Uh, in that vein. Yeah. So the first year before the show launched, we're in New Orleans at what they call, I don't know if they even have it anymore, Natby, right? Which yes. was all the syndicated shows. It was huge. Right? Yeah. It was That's huge. where they pick. They right. show the shows that they're going to hopefully get so, picked up by So I'm sitting with yeah. Whoopi. There's a whole phalanx of photographers. I've this never is for experienced. for the first time of Hollywood Squares. Yeah. yeah. I've never experienced all the flash bulbs going sure. off and yeah. people yelling questions yeah. and all like that. And she's, you know, got me locked arm yeah. in arm. Robert Townsend who was a friend of Whoopi's. Right. Uh, the director, comedian, director, yes. Director, comedian, also African-American, for those right. who don't know yeah. the name, comes over to Whoopi to say hello. Now, I'm, I am I get it. These people want pictures of the two of them. So I start to stand up, just stand up to leave. She grabs me. She yeah. goes, where are you going? I said, well, they want you. She goes, sit your ass down. <laughs> yeah, now, exactly. there's That's a her, photographer yeah. about as far away from me as you are. Yeah. He turns to the other photographers, photographers and said, I love this. He goes, don't worry. I can cut out the white guy. <laughs> Stop. <it. laughs> I swear to God. That's exact hilarious. quote. Not even your name. No. The I white cut guy. out the white guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a game. And she is so real. Yeah. She plays the game on her terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, obviously, people are offended by her politics, but it's her terms. It's right. like what she brings. Right. And you can be you can object to that. I object to some things. Mm -hmm. You're not going to agree with anyone in right, life. Right. You don't agree with Lois, right? All the time, your wife. No. no right. But I mean, we have look. We've been Disag married 42 years. I got to say, we agree more than we disagree. Definitely. Yeah, of course. Yeah, There's yeah. a percentage. Yeah. 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 Percentages we're, we're may vary. Percentage again. Yeah. yeah. Ex exactly. But that's what I don't understand about with the cancel culture and things like that. The associations that people make. All I can tell people is my experience of Whoopi mm -hmm. is the kindest person mm -hmm. in all of Hollywood yeah. that I've ever come across. Mm -hmm. And you can't deny that. That's my experience. Right. And it's apparently it's yeah, yours as well. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, this is a person who really loves talent. She loves creativity. Mm -hmm. And it's it sings to her. Mm -hmm. And she just is a loyal person. And that's something that's lacking in Hollywood. There's yeah. no loyalty. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Tom, what was your reaction I won't lead you where my reaction was <laughs> when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. I was disgusted at the standing ovation he got. There you go. The then we're in agreement again. Yeah, I was we're disgusted. In yeah, disgusted. I want to hear the deeper level of disgust. Like, yeah. I have a reason for being disgusted. Yeah. But what's yours? It's kind of well, similar to what we're the, talking about. The first reason was he should have had his ass yanked out of there. It's assault. Uh, it's assault. Yeah. And... When he when he won the Oscar and completely ruined the evening for everybody else who had yep. worked so hard yeah. for that film, mm -hmm. uh, and then all these phony idiots, Hollywood stand people up, stood up, stood up. I mean, come and on. why are they standing? By the way, it's virtue signaling. Yeah, yeah. Let's stand know. because he's black. I Does don't it, know. You know, Look. I mean, it, that's why else would they stand? They don't stand for the other actors that win yeah. uh, many yeah. times. Yeah. It's a popularity contest. But what I couldn't stand about it, I mean, another level was how they treat comedians. Yeah. We were treated like court jesters. I thought Chris Rock, though, handled Unbelievable. it as best as I a saw him a few weeks could. later at Chappelle's house. Yeah. yeah. And he actually did a routine on it yeah. and it ended up in his special. But yeah. it, in Chappelle's backyard, he had mm -hmm. it set up. His testing think, material. Yeah. Well, yeah. He yeah. got off a plane after doing a concert and then shows up at Chappelle's who had a, he had these concerts in his, in a cornfield in his hometown. <laughs> well, that's and funny. it was like me and John Stewart and Caroline yeah. Ray yeah. and. Uh, Jimmy Fallon was there. I mean, it was an amazing yeah. thing. But then Chris walks in. Hey, I'm Chris Rock. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets up, and he and he had just been basically. The, the, you could still see the hand mark. <laughs> so, right. uh, you could dust him for prints. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's Will Smith. <laughs> what disgusts me is the the, the disdain that the actors who are reading other people's lines of everybody, every setup is there for you, and a comedian were just raw and real mm -hmm. and with a microphone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're going to pick the side of the guy that has all the support and everything else and, yeah. all, and much more money. They yeah. make more money than comedians rather than, oh, let's just have them be the, the – let's have the comedians – amuse me, fool – in between the art, yeah, yeah. and in, 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 between, in between categories that no one cares about, right? Talk right. about virtue signaling. Who yeah. did you, do you t do you tell me one animated short that ever won? I no, did, of course I didn't not. The big quiz. <laughs> I'm full of quizzes. Yeah. You didn't know potentiometer, and now you don't know that either. That's right. So uh, I'm just disgusted at the way people treat comedians. I remember when Chris Rock actually hosted, and he had a little. 
shtick that he was doing about Jude Law. He goes, who's Jude Law? Yeah. Who is Jude Law? <laughs> yeah. And then jo- Sean Penn comes out, like, practically with a smoke machine. Jude Law's a fine actor. Go away, yeah, you peasant. Yeah, yeah, It's like when Ricky Gervais would do the Golden oh, Globes. Love, you know. love, yeah, love. Yeah. So real and yeah. so great. So a lot of this show is about the turnaround. We're going to have a little shift here. I went, You weren't always on top. No. And as a matter of fact, quite the opposite. Yeah. Before the Hollywood Squares, before America's got uh, uh, t- t- down the... America's Home Videos, yeah, yeah. before Dancing with the Stars. You've had all these amazing, amazing career, Tom. It's a very long-lasting career. Let's jump back to just before that. You're feeling this, yeah. the things that people can relate to. All right. Uh, so uh, sharing an apartment with a friend in Newburyport, Massachusetts, right? I'm uh, unemployed. The days of my working at my hometown radio station have passed. I had been doing uh, some theater with uh, with some friends and in a at a theater in Maine, doing the cape, but I was like broke, right? It was winter in New England. Uh, my friend and I both kind of ran out of money, so they weren't delivering oil to the house <laughs> anymore. <laughs> she uh, takes off for to see a friend uh, on the West Coast. Her ex husband uh, moves in to uh, to watch their son, right? So. Um, and apparently he's not going to pay for the uh, the heating oil this either. This is a bad sitcom he, so far. <laughs> it gets worse. It gets worse. So he, he teaches science at the local high school, right? So there is in a, a, <laughs> in a jar of formaldehyde is a pig fetus, right? Mm-hmm. I come downstairs one morning seeing my breath vapor because the apartment is so cold. The dishes in the uh, sink or frozen, literally. And I'm looking on the kitchen table at a pig fetus loading in formaldehyde thinking, it's probably more comfortable than I am. (laughs) But at that moment, I thought, it really can't get worse than this. Yeah, this is my bottom. It really was. Yeah. That motivated me to just take a chance. I said, I got to get back into radio. That's what I know. That's what... I think can pay me again. And at night, at night, what are you feeling? Are you in like a I, fetal position? I would wake up just, in the morning, yeah. literally almost in a fetal position because, yeah. you know, I was bumming money off friends and oh, wow. relatives. And uh, so I just decided, you know what? I'm going to just go to a bunch of radio stations within the vicinity, yeah. hand out a resume. Is it Massachusetts then, or Connecticut? Uh, New Hampshire. Oh, New Hampshire, New Hampshire. okay. Because uh, I was right on the, on the Newburyport's right on the border with New Hampshire. Um pretty much. So instead of a normal resume, because I used to do editorial cartoons for my local newspapers, mm-hmm. I drew I drew a caricature of me as a mime, because I had also been doing mime, okay. and in the thought <laughs> balloon were all of... People the, need to watch this yeah, episode, not yeah. listen, just to watch <laughs> you just that little bit of mime that yeah, you did. <laughs> wow, that, that was Marcel Marceau. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, beautiful. So I didn't want to e- let you get yeah, away with that. Yeah. Okay. So I actually, so I put the resume material yeah. in the thought balloon of the mind, mm-hmm. distributed it to a few radio stations. Uh, I get a call from one uh, station uh, a program director. He said, "Look, I, we don't really have a, an opening. I, I just needed to see who the hell would give me this resume." Wow. And so capitalizing on the fact that I was in the door, mm. I said, you know, I've always, I've always wanted to do a hitchhiking, plane hopping trip across country because I, I grew up loving Thoreau and mm. Emerson and Kerouac, Kerouac and, yeah. uh, and Thompson. Uh, Travels with Charlie For and sure. you know, uh, Steinbeck. And I said, how about if I uh, do a hitchhiking thing and I give you three reports a week and just pay me a stipend and get me airfare back from the West Coast because I knew I wanted to end up in California, mm. San Francisco. They went for it. So I got a backpack Come and on. A, a tent, everything. And a recorder? And a, rec- uh, and a letter from the station manager you know, saying, this is legit. He's, he's working <gasps> for us. Wow. And then for five weeks, I hitchhiked and hopped rides on private planes across America. And that roll of the dice 
got me a regular gig when the guy who had the seven and midnight shift decided to leave and set up his own mm. recording studio. Because yeah. you were there and you were showing how dedicated you are, showing how creative yeah. you are. Yeah. And I think if that's a message that anyone could get, especially someone young who's just out, you know, about to embark on their career. That's, we all have our own pig fetus in formaldehyde. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to give that some contemplation. Yeah, what yeah. was my, yeah, I've got, I've, I have a few. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Probably a whole farm. Yeah, of, it'd be feet high, I guess. Tom, you being my guest is, well, you know what? You take over. You No, you don't want to host anymore. No. no Tom's but our I guest. Can, I can tell you what it was like for you that I was your guest. Oh. This is the best he's ever been. Yeah. So stay with us. Yeah.